Alrighty guys, we're back. Once again, live Leather Pocket, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We have Sean Yi, Joe Bordalo doing battle on the table. It is 10 ball on the nine foots final day. Got started just a little bit late. Hopefully uh, the sound issue has been corrected. Hopefully that's now a thing of the past, although we may stay just to one commentator instead of trying to add that second mic in. And I believe this is rack number one. A little bit of a gift from Sean Yi to Joe. Joe will accept that gift. Joe coming down from Cold Lake, Alberta. It's about a seven hour drive to the north. Been down, supported a few, uh, a few different ones. I think this is his second or third appearance down here in Calgary. Glad to have him. And of course, if you are just tuning in, you know what to do. Help me out, hit that share button. Mr. Ryan Pittman, my good man, how are you, buddy? It has been a minute. Mr. Sprague, how are you, buddy? Thank you, my good man. Uh, good man. Good to be back. Got a little bit of the commentator's rust going on with the shutdown due to COVID, but uh, that'll be over in short order. And yesterday, you watched Joe Bordalo do battle. He was he was doing really, really well yesterday. He's put a ton of time into his game and developing his game. And Joe Bordalo draws first blood. Why do we keep shutting down? There's no reason next time I'm gone. Jim, we often do that because uh, when you go back afterwards and if you're a player and you want to watch your match, it is much easier to find your match that way as opposed to having one great big long session. That's why we do a shutdown restart. It also gives us a chance to have a little bit of a break. It uh, can be a little bit tough trying to commentate a run-on session that would last three, four, five hours. But if you choose to uh, not come back the next time, that is certainly your free will. Would hate to see that happen, but uh, that is definitely your choice, sir. And yes, we are doing, uh, Ryan, Andrew, we're doing well. Hopefully back to business as usual. If you are new to Q Sports Live, typically we are live Every weekend, we travel all over Canada and the United States, bringing you all kinds of action right from, uh, from juniors, ladies, men's, amateur, pro, anything and everything. That was a good out by Joe, for sure. And once again, we are back on YouTube as well. So if you want to join in, comment away. I'll do my best to answer any questions. Or if you have any answers for me, let me know. I'm always good with getting answers. Nice shot from Joe. Rearranges the furniture a little bit. Does not work in his favor. Ten ball is a beach ball. It is acting like a great big beach ball in the way of the two ball. One rail kick off the end rail. Hit the two ball. Don't know if he'll overpower it too much. Ideally, two ball off the rail. Scooch behind the seven ball. Leave it on the six. Good attempt. Looking like a 2-5 combo for Mr. Yi. And again, speaking of somebody that's put a ton of time and effort into his game. 
Sean Yee is always in the mix. That was just barely over pocket weight. Well done. Two ball, same pocket off the rail. Lots of left hand spin all the way back down table for the three ball top left hand corner. Uh, Dean, I believe we're down to final 12, maybe even less than that. I'll see if, uh, if Steph can give me an update. An update. I don't read those. All right, so here are the updates. Uh, going on right now on the B side is Vern versus Jonathan. Oh, that would have been a great match. Nick versus Ben. Joe versus Sean there on the stream. And then Kuhn Dao and Kaz Burns doing battle. That is your B side on the A side. We will have uh, Jonathan Triple P versus Ozzy and Stan and Larry doing battle. So we'll probably, uh, on the next round, next match, we'll probably be John P and Ozzy on the stream. Well, hello, Joe Elliott. How are you, sir? Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Sean in tough on this six ball. What to do? Do you try to bank it in between the window of the eight, 10, and leave the cue ball behind the 10, use that 10 ball? Or play it into the seven ball, use the 10 ball? I think I like the bank option a little bit easier to control the outcome. Even if you play the, uh, the six off the eight, just use the 10 as, uh, as the guard. Hey, no troubles at all, Dean. And he does elect to go off the rail off seven ball. I think Joe does get a piece of the six. It will cross bank if he elects. Indeed he does. So one thing I like about Joe's game is uh, I like the aggression that he comes to play with. More often than not, you'd see people try to play safe here. But I love the aggression of his game. Even if he misses the shot like he did, I still respect the aggression in the game. I think the game needs more of that. Same as Stan. Stan is, is so good at those banks, and it's definitely because he is aggressive. Plays the smart safety when he has to, but if you give him the option, um, I think he would bank over play safe. And I think it's because Ben and I talk about this quite often. Uh, when you have an open shot at a ball and you try to play safe, um, nine out of 10 times, the incoming player is gonna find a way to hit that ball and hook you back. So I, I love to see the aggression. Nice shooting from Sean, making quick work of this one to bring it tie ball game 1-1. One, one. Indeed we are. Tied up one apiece. And I also want to give a shout out to this guy, Richard from T3. I know that there's a few people out that are, are waiting for the T3s, bear with him, guys. He is in the hospital. Uh, bear with him. He will get the product to you, that I can tell you. Uh, and it is definitely well worth the wait. Uh, we do get a little bit of a deal on those. So if you are looking to get your hands on one, send a message to the Q Sports Live page. I'll let you know how we can make that happen for you. Brian, thanks for tuning in. All the way from Texas. 156 people on right now on Facebook. Let's see if we can get those numbers up a little bit. Help me out, everybody, if you can. Hit that share button. Let's get some viewers happening. So Joe at the table with the break. 
absolutely Hulk smashes that break. Loses the cue ball a little bit, but he is open on the one ball. The thriving metropolis of Airdrie. That was quite the storm that blew through this afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm in Sage Hill, which is northwest Calgary. I'm, I don't know, maybe a 10 minute drive on the back roads to, uh, to Airdrie. So that was quite the, uh, quite the rainstorm. Had a little bit of hail, just tiny, tiny little guys. And a rare open table miss. A little bit of a tougher shot when you're back cutting those into a blind pocket. But that'll, uh, that'll sit up nice, dressed and pressed for Sean. One ball might go back and forth. Try to leave the cue ball just north of where he's at right now for the two into the side. Tickles the pocket, comes up a little bit short. May have to draw this two ball. Two to the three. Three to the four, four, five, five, six, six, seven. This right here could be your game winning shot. Everything else is uh, fairly open and routine to get to. Nice draw. Perfect will do. Three to the four. Again, probably just a draw back. With it being just that touch off the side rail, you'll probably see him draw straight back to the side rail. Put the four ball bottom right hand corner as you look at the table. Does want a little bit of angle. That way he can pop himself over for the five ball. Virginia Beach in the house. Thanks for tuning in, Bradley. Well, we'll see if he puts this into the side pocket. I think he's got to go long. I think he's got to go down to the bottom right-hand corner. Yeah, Sean's got a really, really long bridge. Tried to hold that. I'm not sure whether that was the best plan. He could have played that with a little bit more power and gone past where he's at now and had the five to this uh, bottom side pocket. Yeah, he's got super long bridge. Plays a smart safety. Simple one rail kick here for Joe. Can go at it off this uh, bottom rail as you're looking at the table or off that right what would be considered normally the uh, the bottom rail. We'll see what he comes up with. Could go off the, uh, oh, he's gonna go aggressive. I love it. Up and over. Great hit. Does he get rewarded? Well, he gets rewarded in the fact that he uh, made a good shot. Great attempt. I love the aggression. I think Sean's got just the outside edge of that five ball. Can see the hit. Don't know if he can see the make. Lou, what's happening? Tuning in from New Jersey. An ever faithful viewer of Q Sports Live, and we really appreciate it, Lou. Nice two rail safe back. And normally I would say, uh, you know, maybe a one or two rail kick in behind the five ball, but we'll see what, uh, <laughs> I love the aggression. We'll see what, uh, what Joe comes up with. I think he is gonna go two rails back unless he's got the window split between six, seven. Nice little kick. Does he get rewarded again? Sit it on the end rail. Not a bad shot. Mr. Jolly, my good man. How are you, brother? Hopefully everybody's had a great long weekend. Uh, I ended up working most of the weekend. Uh, put in a monster day yesterday. I was 13 hours on the computer trying to get everything done that I needed to get done in order to come and stare at this computer screen today. But it's good to be back. Glad to be back on the mic. A little bit of COVID rust, bear with me. I'll work through it. 
my voice is certainly not as acclimated to being live every weekend as what it once was. Jarrett, how are you, sir? And another open table miss for Joe. Advantage, Mr. Yi. He can take his first lead of the game. Five to the six, your game-winning shot. Everything else fairly routine. So we'll see whether he goes two rails around or whether he checks this with uh, with left-hand spin. Oh, no, he's drawn into that two rails out. Uh, is that Ben on the other table? It is indeed. Ben Francis, Nick Kruger doing battle on the B side. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, William. I'm doing well. As well as could be uh, could be expected, I guess, given the circumstances. Nice attempt, more of a containing safety, didn't quite get the full hook. And we'll see whether Sean wants to be aggressive here. One bank on the uh, on the five ball left hand side pocket, or whether he's going to spin off the top of that, put the three behind the ten, and the cue ball up behind the six seven. That was his attempt. Does that leave a 5-10 wired up combo? Does it leave it on? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the, the score for Ben. I wish. As it sits, uh, the table that we're broadcasting, I'm probably 15 feet from that table. So... 25 feet from where Stan and Nick are playing. But if you watch their action, you'll see them move their coins around the table. That'll give you a gauge as to what their scores are. Uh, comment on YouTube. Is Eric playing in this? No. Uh, both Eric and Joe both working this weekend. Joe Spence, that is. Gordon, why aren't y'all wearing masks? <laughs> According to the city of Calgary, if you are engaged in a sporting event, a mask is not required. Uh, Peter, I will see if I can get Steph to, uh, to uh, pop that up. Can you uh, put uh, the link to CompuSport up, please? Sorry, I didn't see what happened with the 5-6. I was busy reading comments and then uh, asking Steph to update that. But Sean Yee at the table looking good. Nice little touch draw. Leaves himself just dead straight on the eight ball. Nice little floater. Oh, he's going to punch it in instead. <laughs> I'll hold my mic to her. Hi, Sean Jolly. <laughs> Typically, uh, with Q Sports Live, we'd have a couple of different commentators. Myself, Stephanie Toy, would normally be handling it, but uh, with the sound issues that we've been having as of late, we figured that uh, we may as well just try with one mic as opposed to two. So far, been working out. Eric Pagulion, uh, Eric Vargas, uh, Gordon. I uh, wish the States would say that a pool hall in Lake Havasu still isn't open. Good heavens. I am, uh, I am one of the lucky ones. Uh, even throughout COVID, I have a, a table at home, so hasn't really done my, uh, done my game much because uh, as I found out playing scotch doubles with, uh, with Ben Francis, um, there is a big difference between just banging balls at home and playing in, uh, in a tournament scenario. The mentality, uh, mental aspect is way different. Yeah. 
and got his first win. Well, I can say Nick has been playing some pretty sporty pool. You're certainly not going to travel all the way from uh, from BC to play in an event and, and not take it seriously. So, uh, Ben Grant, uh, was Sean the fellow who came to PEI from Sask two years ago? I don't think so. Um, I'm not sure who that was, but uh, I think Sean, uh, as far as I know, has only played in uh, Niagara Falls. That's typically where we get to see Sean Jolly, uh, Jerry Cahan. Um, uh, I don't know whether Ryan Pittman goes to, uh, to Niagara Falls, but anybody involved in the CCS events uh, always have a great time. I was really, really looking forward to Niagara Falls this year. And as of that Monday, what a great shot from, uh, from Joe. Lots and lots of right-hand spin. Um, but was really looking forward to the Niagara Falls event this year. And uh, as of that Monday, uh, we were supposed to leave Monday at 2. And as of Monday at 9 a.m., uh, I was still packing. I was looking to, to get going. But uh, they canceled the event Monday at 10 o'clock. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Get people to come to your house, Gordon, and gamble on your home table. Advantage to you, sir. The fella's name was Sean. Sean from Saskatchewan. Who would that have been? Uh, Fabian, that would have been the CCS Maritimes. Maritime Championships. Always fun. I'll tell you what, if y'all ever want to go to a spot and just be treated like royalty, go see Andrew out in, uh, in PEI. By far, they have treated uh, Q Sports Live the best out of anywhere that we've been. And look forward to doing it again. Nice little draw shot from Joe. Gets himself in on the nine ball. Little bit of off angle here. And on this shot, I kind of like popping it. I, I like to pop and draw below the 10 ball, put the 10 into the bottom left-hand corner as you look at the table. So he drew and is going up to the top left-hand corner. Could optionally go into the side pocket as well. Uh, a side match. Nope, this one is a B side match. So I will change that on the scoreboard because it still says A side match. However, the race indicator does say race to six. And that is a B side match. There we go. <laughs> Send me an invite and he'll go to PEI. I think it's an open, uh, open event, maybe. I don't know, Andrew. You can answer that a lot better than I can. Um, Sean Jolly does play CCS. Is he allowed to travel to uh, to the PEI event? Question mark, question mark. Nice finish from Joe. Regains the lead 2-1 to one over Sean Yee. And he's got the break. You know what, David? I uh, I remember hearing. Uh, I I don't know whether I remember hearing it. I know that uh, exactly what you were talking about. The guy came uh, that uh, came down from from none of it um, played phenomenally well, given the fact that it's just a small community. Two two, am I wrong? Two two. Is it really two two? All right, I'll go with you, Blaine. I must have missed uh, a game or two. This is part of that COVID rust that I was talking about. And 
nice safe play from Joe. Yeah, I thought it was 2 1. I thought it was 2 to 1 for Joe. Sean Yi with the thumper going airborne over the five ball, attempting to make the one into the bottom right-hand corner. Pop off that rail, have two in the side. A good hit, look out, cue ball. Sean says, your, time, your turn, Joe. I thought it was two to one. I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my original of two to one, Joe over Sean. Joe looking to almost do the same shot. Up and over. Gets the hit. No reward. No good shot goes unpunished, they say. Leave Sean an open shot on the one ball. Just avoid the five ball, two ball into the bottom, or sorry, I guess middle pocket on the bottom side. <coughs> I'll see if Steph can go give me a score update as soon as this one's over, just so I know whether we're gonna be 2-2, two, 3-1. Two, so good news, bad news, pocketed the one ball. I don't know whether the two slides by the 10 ball. I don't think so. Yeah, 5-4. <laughs> oh, it goes by that 10 ball all day long. Sean Yee says, here, let me show you the way. 2-2. Two, two. It is 2-2 two, two, as it sits right now. Blaine, you were correct, sir. I will tip my hat to you. Pretty routine from here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fairly simple pattern, nice little draw on this four to the five. Don't know whether six passes the eight, although he just proved me wrong on the eight ball or on the two ball. Back on track. We are tie ball game 2 2. Sean with commanding control of the table. Fairly easy pattern play here. Whew. That six ball just about took the wrong turn. That could have very easily caught that horn and not dropped. That is definitely the problem with floating those shots. Nice little right hand juice on the cue ball on that shot. So again, touch of angle on the nine ball after depositing the eight. Just like that, draw on the nine. Doesn't have to get too overzealous with it. With the 10 ball being where it is, you can pretty much pocket that from anywhere on the table. Built an extension from Sean. Just to add to that super long bridge that he's already got. And now we'll see Sean take the first lead of the match.
There it is. <clears throat> and we'll give a shout out to a longtime sponsor now with uh, Q Sports Live. Jacoby Q's, home of the Jacoby Black. If you are looking to get your hands on one, send us a message to the Q Sports Live page. We do get a small deal on those. One of the best hitting carbon fibers, at least in my opinion, Ben's opinion. It is one of the best hitting carbon fibers there is. Three, two, Sean with the break, looking to extend the lead. Just saw Nick Kruger in the background taking another game off Ben Francis. Not sure what the score is over there. Maybe I'll see if Steph can give me a update on Ben Francis and Nick. <laughs> Sean launches the cue ball off the table. Right at Nick. Joel looking to play the safety pool here. One ball, cue ball off the rail, sit it behind that four ball. I think he has left either the outside edge or certainly the kick on the one ball. Uh, is there a noticeable improvement from Nick's carbon fiber cue to the Jacoby? Um, <coughs> minor at best. Um, Nick, Nick's kind of one of those guys that he really, really, really puts a lot of quality into what he does. So his his kind of uh, carbon fiber hits extremely well. I think the really the only difference between Nick and uh, and the Jacoby. Uh, the Jacoby comes with uh, aerospace grade carbon fiber. Uh, there's only two out on the market that do have that. I believe it's the Jacoby and the and the MezQ. Those are both uh, aerospace grade carbon fiber. But that being said, um, Nick is known around Calgary for his quality, so I would expect nothing less from his Jaco or from his uh, his carbon fiber shaft. Uh, one to one, indeed, Regis, you are correct. I just got the update. It is one to one. It is tie ball game. Ben Francis and Nick Kruger. Joe at the table. Uh, three, four, four to the five. Yeah, there's a little bit of back and forth here on this table. Three to the four. Does the four squeeze by the six? Must if he played it that way. <clears throat> Got a little bit straight here. Wanted some angle to put the four ball in, go back across table for the five ball. Yeah, no troubles at all, Jarrett. Oh, um, then maybe it is the, the Q Tech, not Mez. I know there's, there's only two of them out there. I thought it was the Mez, but it could be the Q-Tech. Again, my, my COVID rust bearing its head. So some back and forth here. Draw off the side rail, off the second side rail. Oh, he went forward. Interesting choice. Nine ball helps him out. Sticks the cue ball there. Six balls over the pocket. Now getting to the seven. Getting to the seven could be a little bit tricky here. Could go two rails, but that brings in the 10 ball. You could go one rail back right to where he's at right now. Uh, what's the Jacoby worth these days? 600. Uh, it depends on what the exchange rate is and whether you're buying in uh, in Canada or the States. 
Um, if you're in the States, they're normally priced. 475 plus shipping. Um, if you're in Canada, it's 475 USD plus shipping plus duty, um, unless you get that through Q Sports Live. Uh, we, like I said, we do get a little bit of a deal on them. But uh, if you want to know what that deal is, uh, just send a message to the Q Sports Live page and I'll get back to you. Richard, uh, the Revo is also made of aerospace. Nope. Not from Predator. The Predator is not, unless they've upgraded. When they came out, that was definitely not aerospace grade carbon fiber. Are there any carbon fiber shafts that aren't aerospace grade? Yes, there certainly are. So maybe it's the, the I've, I, I've heard from, from a few people that uh, you get that ping or that tink sound uh, using a carbon fiber. Um, maybe that's the difference. I don't know. I don't notice it with, uh, with the Jacoby. But I think you can get that tink sound uh, even from a wood shaft. I think that is more dependent on the grip and the stroke that you put on the cue ball. Hey, no troubles at all, Jared. Yeah, I don't know if that's the difference, though, Regis. Um, like I said, I I can get that tink sound even out of a even out of a wood shaft. I think that's more on how you're gripping and and the particular stroke or or shot that you're playing. Just quality. Uh, so Sam on uh, on YouTube, what's the point in space grade? Seems a bit extreme. Um, yes and no. I mean, is uh, is extreme playing or or, or buying a, a thirty five thousand dollar custom queue? That's extreme. Um, I don't know if uh, using quality material in a uh, in a product, I don't know if that's extreme. Certainly $35,000 seems a bit extreme. Joe making an early 10 ball to square the match up 3-3. Oh, one. Huh? Oh, I was just corrected. It is 4-3. <laughs> See, this is what I get when I start going on my uh, on my rants, on my side convos. Yeah, I know when they when they first come out, the uh, the Predator Revo, that was certainly not uh, aerospace grade technology. Now we are correct score. Four to three is the correct score. But talking of extremes, I would say, like you look at Jacoby Custom Cues, they've been the, the People's Choice Award winner for, gosh, I'm, I want to say 10 of the last 15 years. And those People's Choice Cues that they make, they sell for $30,000, $35,000. That's extreme. Yeah. Sean gets it on his wooden cue, for sure. <clears throat> That's why I say I, I really don't think it's the material <clears throat> that, uh, that you use, because you can get that tink sound no matter what. I think it's the, the grip and, and you know, it, it's that little kind of a poke shot that tends to bring out that tink sound. Nice shot by Ben to take the lead two to one. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna go on a Small break. 
yeah, where you can hit the cue ball for sure. Is that extreme if you do it five days a week and it is your livelihood? Uh, I guess it's all in the eye of the beholder. <clears throat> if it's not extreme for you to uh, to spend thirty to thirty five grand on a on a pool cue, more power to you. Myself, I you know I'm I'm okay uh, whether I play with a, a thirty five thousand dollar cue or a thousand dollar cue. Right now, is there differences between uh, you know a standard bar cue? And one of the, you know, Predators or one of the custom-made cues, 100%. 100%. And yes, you get the age-old argument, uh, oh, I could play with a broom handle. You could, but why would you? You can play golf with the old wooden wooden irons and, and you know, old technology as well, but why would you? What would be the point of that? If you're looking to improve the game, play with the best equipment that you possibly can. I don't know why people would bother trying to play pool with a broom handle. Makes no sense. Yeah, Mike, you bring up a good point. Um, you know, as with any sport, I think, uh, you know, the, the carbon fiber shaft is maybe one of those things that, uh, you know, will stick around. I've, uh, when they first came out, um, I had heard, uh, that, oh, it's just another graphite. Uh, I think graphite uh, back in the day was perhaps ahead of its uh, ahead of its time frame. I think it could have done well, um, but they were they were not very well made uh, graphite shafts back in those days. Um, but I think now the market perhaps is a little bit more uh, accepting of new technology. But as, as every sport evolves, you're going you're gonna to have those ebbs and flows of what's tried and true versus new tech. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you know, yes, you can uh, you can certainly play well, um, you know, using mid-level, lower-level stuff, without a doubt. And really, it's 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 all you. What makes you feel good? What makes you play good? And if that's a bar cue, pull it off the wall, man. More power to you. I don't really care what the equipment is. It can be a bar cue. It can be a sneaky peek. It can be any of those things. If you feel good and it and it hits the way you like and you know when you when you feel good you play good so that's the equipment i would suggest you buy whether that's the carbon fiber whether that's the wood shaft uh, the bob danielson the ss 360 now i will say for wood shafts that thing's flipping phenomenal um but whatever whatever makes you feel good same as tips we get asked that a lot what tip do you use i use the one that plays well for me um, I would suggest that if you are, you know, fairly new um, to pool, don't be scared to, you know, experiment a little bit. And whether that's by changing them the, yourself or, uh, you know, trying other people's stuff, don't be scared. See what works. From there, you'll find the comfort. And as your game evolves, um, your equipment will change, right? I've changed my cue. God, I don't, even, I don't even know how many times I've changed my cue. But certainly as a new player, don't be scared. Try the wood shaft, try the carbon fiber, whatever, whatever makes you feel good. <laughs> you and me both, Jarrett. That's how I survive my day job is by uh, playing pool, even with a broom handle. Yeah, 100%, Richard. All right. There was a very long-winded tangent 
we'll go back into paying attention to what's going on on the table. Thin cut, yeah. Uh, diamond tables, that's probably not going to ever fall. If that was a bar table, that would have dropped in no problem. Diamond tables, the cut of those pockets really don't allow for anything like those shots to, to be dropped in. However, does get rewarded for the attempt. Leaves the one ball somewhat contained. We'll see if he calls the one nine combo or whether he's straight kicking the one to the side. Straight kicks the one to the side. And he's gonna get rewarded. So a little bit of a difference between uh, 10 ball versus nine ball versus eight ball. Mentally, there's a little bit of a difference. Uh, game obviously is uh, different rule sets. But you may see them bat this one ball around a couple of times until he who cracks first. Nice safe play, seven ball being used as the beach ball. Uh, is all the pool, yeah. All of our pool halls are open now. Um, hidden spots chosen to remain closed. I believe they're opening up uh, this week. And as they open up, as players, guys, as your pool halls open up, make sure you go down and support them. Doesn't matter which pool hall, doesn't matter where it is, what the location. Um, if this game is going to survive, they're going to need our support. And uh, in order for the game to survive, we need the halls to survive. So make sure you head down to your local pool hall. Show them some love. Don't just go and play pool. Grab some dinner, have a couple of drinks. If everybody could do that, you know, even once or twice a month, makes a world of difference to pool halls. So Joe looking good here. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, probably seven to the eight ball is gonna be your game winning shot here. With the nine ball being where it is, does make snuggling into that, uh, into that eight ball a little bit challenging. Five to the six, no problem. Maybe a little bit of right hand spin just to catch that end rail. Cancel out some of the uh, angled reflection or refraction off the rail. Depending on the angle, for me, that's kind of what it looks like. And that's exactly what he did do. A little bit of right hand spin there. And here, which way do I play this? You can go two rails out, put the seven into the top right hand corner. Little bit tricky. You know what, I think I'm just gonna play for the bank shot. Do I wanna get cute and try to play in and bring in the side pocket, bring that into play? <laughs> I gotta take the dust off my cues. Indeed. Great shot. Now if I know Joe, he is definitely gonna draw this ball. He draws really, really well. Only question is, do you bring in the nine ball? Do you bring in the side pocket? Do you try to float up table a little bit? Maybe a touch draw, float right down to where he just pointed. Any pros in the tournament? Uh, yes. Well, I guess you could consider uh, a few people pro in this event. You've got Stan Taranjo. Uh, Certainly been around the scene forever and a day. Ben Francis, you could consider a pro. I believe his uh, Fargo rating, 724, I believe. Uh, Nick Kruger. 
really good road player. Uh, don't know what his Fargo is, but uh, he's always in the thick of it, looking to, looking to win. But definitely lots of high caliber players. And at some point, I'd love to be able to put on the Q Sports Live Invitational again. If you are fairly new to Q Sports Live, that was an event that we held here at the Leather Pocket last year. It was a $10,000 added event. And uh, we had the likes of uh, Tyler Steyer, John Mora, Stephen Halem. Uh, who else came down? Um, Stan was here. Edwin Montel came out of retirement. It was a packed house full of massive, massive talent. And uh, Stan Taranjo was the winner of that event. So as things open up, um, we may not be able to do it this year. Um, would need, uh, need to get back into sponsorship, which means getting into more regularly scheduled events and so on and so forth. Um, but hopefully next year, uh, we'll bring back the Q Sports Live Invitational. We were hoping to make that an annual event. This year, uh, COVID had a different idea in place for us. Joe with a look at the one. Can he see enough to back cut that? Wow. Not looking like it. Plays a safe, although I would think that has leaked out. If not, uh, Sean will uh, inevitably grab the jump cue, but it looks like it did leak out. Nice little stun shot. Two ball into the bottom left. Oh, gotta, gotta make, uh, I'm okay, yeah. Gotta complete the first part of that equation first and uh, make the one ball. So Joe with a look at it, not sure whether uh, he can see that straight. He does have an option to play it off the three or the four, also has the safe option. Okay, no troubles at all. Barrier Island men commenting on YouTube. <laughs> no worries, Mr. Sean Jolly. We will inevitably at some point do some battle again on the table. Ben in the background there tries to absolutely murder the murder the rack there. Did make a ball, sitting pretty on the one ball. Looks like a fairly dressed up table. And Joe is on the hill in uh, the match that we're currently watching, leading five to four over Sean Yi. This is the final day, guys. This was the triple threat here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Started on Saturday, which was nine ball on the nine foot tables. Yesterday was eight ball on the eight foots. And today we're back on the nine foot tables. 10 ball is the game. And your top 16 came back today. Everybody making money that came back today. Sean Yi with a tricky looking five ball. Oh, no, I lied, tricky three ball. Or is there the two? I can't, can't quite tell. Let me look live. No, it is the three. The three, the four. What do you do? Play safe, roll the cue ball up behind that five, five, seven ball. 
That's an option. Just got to watch that you don't overhit that three ball. Oh, great touch. Sean says, jump that, Mr. Joe. And instead, he's got a one rail kick three into the top left, uh, sorry, top middle corner as you look at the table. Might have to put some pace on this if he wants a hope at uh, making this and getting shape on the four ball. Not a terrible effort. That's going to leave three and four, both on that uh, bottom rail as you look at the table. Option, of course, for the combination, which Sean does call. Three to the four coming up. It's controlling the three balls that is going to be the key here if you make the shot. Hmm. It was a nice attempt, but does the three now split the window between the seven and nine? If it splits between that seven nine, you've got to favor Joe to get out here. Just catches the outside edge of that nine ball. Although rewarded for the mistake there. And if I was Sean, I'd be kicking at this off this bottom, bottom rail as you look at the table. Put the three into the top right-hand corner. Because I don't think he can see any of it. If you could see any of it, then uh, you just clip the outside edge of the three and send the cue ball back up table. Have more of a separating safety than anything, but I don't know if he can see it. talking about kick that one rail kick the three from behind put it into the top right hand corner cue ball comes out you do have to watch the five seven they will come into play if he makes the shot a little bit angly with where that nine ball is so if you shorten up the uh, the angle and you can correct that angle out and just apply some left hand spin to the cue ball. <clears throat> Who won between Stan and Ben? That would be Stan the man. Taken out Mr. Ben Francis. Pete Robertson joining us from Adelaide, Australia. Good morning, sir. How are you? Thank you very much for tuning in again. Hopefully I was correct, Pete. Adelaide, Australia, if my memory is correct. It has certainly been a minute. But if my memory is correct, it is uh, Adelaide, Australia. Tricky, tricky. Important game for Joe here. Wants to make sure he's playing it correctly because uh, if you're sitting in Joe's seat, you would rather take this match right here, right now. 5-5, five, five. we've seen that happen so many times. It can go either way. Hey, I'm doing well, Pete. Hopefully everything is uh, is good with everybody in Australia. Uh, I've heard in Melbourne it's uh, in complete and absolute lockdown, curfew in place, the whole works. So hopefully uh, 
yourself and everybody else really around the world is uh, is learning to cope and deal with uh, whatever measures governments have put in place. At some point, we've got to get back to some semblance of normalcy. So, three, four, the nine, ten. Do you develop that off the four ball? I would think so. Go into the 9-10 here, cause a little bit of separation. Hopefully leaving the cue ball kind of down in that general vicinity. You'll have the five to the side pocket. Roll up for the six. From there, it's, uh, it's a tie ball game. Which, of course, is going to be Sean Yee's way of going. He wants to make this a tie ball game. Got a little unfortunate with the kiss. He did create the separation he was looking for. Still has the five into the uh, into the bottom middle pocket. Only thing is, how do you get back to the six? If you try to go, you know, to the left of uh, of the ten off that rail and underneath, it does bring the ten in. It brings the nine in. You can try and play some right hand spin. Look out, cue ball and got away with that shot. Not sure whether Joe can see full, full on that five ball or not. Uh, if not, you'll probably see him reach for the jump cue. <laughs> we definitely could have snow from what I hear. Um, Calgary's about, I don't know, 40 minutes or so uh, from the mountains. Um, and from what I've heard today, uh, it did snow in the mountains. Winter is coming. <laughs> which, which for Calgary could mean next week. It could also mean mid-January. Can never tell with Calgary. Yeah, it is bad. They're uh, slowly getting better. That's good. At least it's on uh, on the right trend. Although it will be interesting, and, and COVID is not something I want to get into the politics of and all the other stuff, but um, only reason I bring this up is because I do have kids, and uh, it'll be interesting to see whether they keep schools open. Um, I know with Calgary just opening up, there has been a spike in cases with kids, and uh, it'll be interesting to see whether they actually keep schools open, whether they're going to close them, what is uh, going to take place. So it'll be interesting to see. <laughs> Pete, you're laughing at me from Australia. The only problem I have with Australia is them big bloody spiders that y'all get down there. Thanks, but nope. I will keep my cold and my snow because those things are the size of my head. They would... They eat small children. They're that big. <laughs> I thought Calgary did not have summers anymore. Uh, we really don't. We get uh, we get flashes of summer, and then we get hailstorms. And I've seen it snow in Calgary in July. See, Pete, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Them spiders y'all got down there. Whew. Nope. Nope, nope, and nope. Uh, Richard, yes, Daniel Nagranu is actually a really, really good pool player. Believe it or not, so is Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is pretty sporty on a pool table. Uh, Daniel was uh, was really big into pool at one point, and then uh, he became kid poker. But yeah, uh, Daniel knows how to hold a cue, that's for sure.
Sean Yi looking to tie this ball game. Go Hill Hill. Got a little bit funny on the uh, on the seven ball. Shouldn't be any problem for him here. Can do one of two things. Go forward off the end rail. Maybe a little bit of right hand spin. Play uh, the eight into the top left hand corner. Might be the way I would go. He goes around three. That was option number two. Hits it perfectly. Um, only reason I don't like the three rail come around like that is it brings in the nine and the ten ball. Don't forget about all the venomous snakes in the box jellyfish. Other than that, beautiful place. I agree. I'd love to go there. Just get rid of those uh, box jellyfish, uh, the venomous snakes, and uh, those big bloody spiders, and I'll come visit. So with the deposit of the 10 ball, Sean Yi looking to go Hill Hill. Who doesn't like Hill Hill? There we are. Hill Hill. And we spoke of this gentleman earlier. He again, one of the Q Sports Live uh, sponsors, uh, does all the maintenance for us on, uh, on our Qs. Nick's Q Innovations, absolute genius when it comes to maintenance, repairs. Uh, the guy fixes stuff that should be impossible to fix. Hit him up on Facebook or give him a call. Um, whether you're in Calgary or not, you can always send your cue to him. He will do the necessary repair and send it back. <laughs> minor detail. I don't know if I would call that minor. From a, uh, from a Calgary kid, having spiders that are the size of a giant hand should not be allowed. That's just wrong. Joe Bordalo with the break, looking for some love. He does make a ball on the break. Well, hello, Elaine. Uh, we're doing well. A uh, little bit of COVID rust on, uh, on commentating, but uh, other than that, things have been really well. Been uh, extremely busy. Working my you-know-what's off and uh, put in... A big day yesterday, so I could make sure I have enough time to uh, come down and help out everybody today. But yeah, we're doing well. Uh, kids are heading back to school. I think they, uh, Brandon, I, I think started Thursday, both Brandon and Dylan. And how are you, by the way? And you are correct in calling this absolute craziness. It's, uh, it is definitely not the new norm. I've seen that comment out there. I don't want this to be the new norm. I want our normal and what it was prior to COVID. That's what I want back. Let's bring back the old norm. And in the background, Ben Francis. Looking good. Not sure what the score is over there, but uh, he sure is, sure is shooting well. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> he has got that match locked. And Joe with a open table miss on the three ball. Hey, you too, Sean. Thanks for joining us. Benny Franchise comes out victorious over uh, over Nick Kruger. Score of six to one. Oh, wow. 
That is very good to hear, and congratulations on the new addition. Yeah, we had uh, some unexpected business through uh, through Jam Up Apparel. I mentioned earlier. Um, for those that don't know, um, I do own a part of Jam Up Apparel, and uh, I'll go off on a small little tangent about Jam Up Apparel. Um, obviously, we catered more to the pool community, and then with uh, with COVID, uh, we were shut down, and uh, our manufacturer was shut down, and. We were not sure what uh, what we were going to do, and then we got a message from our manufacturer that they were going to allow him to open up again uh, if he was willing to retool his entire business to produce face masks. And so we kind of decided that, well, I mean, there was nothing else that we could produce, so we may as well jump on and see if we can help people get face masks if they needed them. And that's what we did. And... Uh, those masks are still available on the website. So if you're, uh, if you're looking for some fashionable style masks, head on to the Jam Up website. We just slashed those prices. Uh, they were $12.95. Now they're double layer polyester. Uh, they have an antimicrobial treatment of microban, uh, washable, reusable, all the good things that you're looking for. Um, they are on the website, jamupapparel.com. Uh, we just released um, Junior Jam Up. So that is now live on the website. And since all of that craziness happened, we've, uh, we've kind of branched off of uh, not just offering pool shirts. Uh, we just released a line of golf shirts. So we've got some bigger plans uh, going forward with Jam Up Apparel. We are going to get into other things. Uh, we do have Element 4 that uh, is another business that uh, same owners, same everything. Uh, Element 4 more caters to... Uh, the fishing industry. So if you are a fisherman and looking for some new sporty gear, you can head on to Element 4. So yeah, lot, lots and lots and lots of things uh, going on. And then uh, with the hail as of late in Calgary, that sent everything that I thought I was busy with and just added a whole lot more craziness to it. So uh, I cannot complain. I can't uh, really say much other than it has been extremely busy for myself. And they are pretty sporty and comfortable. You are correct, Regis. I know that uh, early on, Jam Up uh, had, you know, uh, uh, a few issues, we'll say, uh, and that is uh, in the manufacturing side um, with one of our older uh, manufacturers that uh, we used to use, they unfortunately didn't do so well for us. Um, so we've since changed that manufacturer. We've been the, been with the new one for, gosh, I'll say eight months, nine months. And uh, things are phenomenal. If you haven't got a jam up shirt within the, uh, the last eight or nine months, you got to try them out. They are phenomenal. Sean Yee looking to close, uh, close escrow. Speaking of real estate, hey, Elaine, who wants to close escrow on this match? Looking to do so right now. Sean Yee for the win. In it goes. Sean Yee victorious. The come from behind win over Joe Bortolo. Great showing again by Joe. Always a pleasure uh, when he comes down from Cold Lake, Alberta, seven hours. We appreciate the support here uh, with not only with Q Sports Live, but the pool hall. Really, really well done. With that being said, guys, we are going to do a quick shutdown restart. Get the next set of matches locked, loaded, and ready to go. It should be Kevin Osborne uh, next on the stream. Don't go far, don't go away. We're going to be back on behalf of myself, Stephanie Toy, Ben Francis, and the rest of the Q Sports Live team. We appreciate you tuning in here, guys. Don't go far. We'll be back in a jiff.